Hey guys, it's Tracy here for Savvy Journey, where I give you tips and tricks to help you travel in the savviest way possible. So today we're going to be doing my wizard's guide to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Tips and hidden magic. So stay tuned. So my husband and I have been to Universal Orlando several times now. My main reason for going was because of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I am a huge Harry Potter fan. I've of course read the books several times and couldn't wait for my first visit to enter the magical world of Harry Potter. And I will tell you now, it doesn't disappoint. Every time I return, walking into Diagon Alley feels like coming home. I've read many, many blogs and seen lots of videos on the tips and hidden secrets of the wizarding world. But having been there many, many times and having adventured into every nook and cranny, this is my list of tips, tricks, and secrets. So for tip number one, when to go. We've now been to Universal in the months of February, September, and November. In November, we were there Thanksgiving week, so it was the most crowded of the months we visited. I don't think I have to tell you that it will be packed in the summer. But February and September were supposed to be slower times for Universal. But although February was much cooler and comfortable weather, September was obviously less crowded. I'll show you a side-by-side -side pictures and you'll see the difference too. Our February trip was the week of President's Day and our September trip was the last week of the month. So it is safe to say that all theme parks will be more crowded during holiday weeks. So tip number two, where first? I've heard many blogs and videos mention going to Hogsmeade first as Diagon Alley is more shaded and cooler for the afternoon. I will say this is definitely true, but I feel like when it's your first visit for a true wizard or Harry Potter fan, you must go to Diagon Alley first, then take the train to Hogsmeade. Especially if you have a younger fan with you, it will feel like a more truly authentic experience of being a new student to Hogwarts. Trust me. But make sure you take the Hogwarts Express back to Diagon Alley at some point. The train ride is interactive and is different each way. But if you can only go to one side, I'd recommend Diagon Alley. Make sure you are aware though that you must purchase a park to park ticket to be able to ride the Hogwarts Express. What is a park to park ticket? When purchasing a park to park ticket, you receive unlimited access to both Universal Studios, Diagon Alley, and Islands of Adventure. Hogsmeade, which also includes admittance to the Hogwarts Express. The Hogwarts Express actually connects the two parks and provides transportation from one park to another. This is why you need a park-to-park -park ticket to ride it. When riding the Hogwarts Express, make sure you enjoy the details in the train station, as well as getting your picture taken walking through the barrier of platform nine and three quarters. Okay, so my tip number three is about where to stay when you're going primarily for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. If staying on site, we stayed at the Cabana Bay Hotel, you will get early access to Diagon Alley and it is well worth it to be there ahead of the crowds. Tip number four, entering the park. When you enter Universal Studios, if entering during standard hours, the quickest way to Diagon Alley is to take a right the block after the Shrek ride. You'll be walking past the Transformers building on your left, then take a left after the Transformers ride, follow the lake on your right all the way to London. If you stay on site and have early admission access to Diagon Alley, then you'll be directed to walk a specific path towards the back through New York. If entering Islands of Adventure first to get to Hogsmeade, you will just follow the park around to the right. You'll pass through Dr. Seuss Land, which can be quite distracting, especially for children, and the Lost Continent. I highly recommend Mythos for dinner. Then you'll see the gates to Hogsmeade ahead of you. Okay, here are some tips for when you're entering Diagon Alley. A lot of people get confused the first time they've ever been and don't realize where the entrance is. So as you're heading into the London area, um, 
which is just outside of Diagon Alley, you're going to come up on a brick facade on your left. It kind of overlaps. You can't tell that there's an entrance, but there is an entrance. So just look for those red bricks and enter through there, and that is Diagon Alley. But before you get to the brick facade to Diagon Alley, which is on your left, look left just before. In between the Screed and Sons bookstore and the record shop, there is a sign for the actual leaky cauldron door from the London Street. You can also step in the phone booth and dial magic to reach the Ministry of Magic. Tip number five, the night bus. So as you're entering London, and I told you, you will see the leaky cauldron and the bricks facade on your left, look to your right and you'll see the night bus. It's the big purple bus. You can have a conversation with the conductor and talking head. The talking head has a real conversation with you. There's definitely some extra hidden magic there, unlike the Siri types of answers you get from the Green Gods Goblin. Also, make sure you head around to the back of the bus. You'll get a glimpse inside the night bus. Tip number six, Grimald Place. Go straight past the entrance and you are now on Grimald Place. Have your picture taken on the steps of number 12. Believe it or not, I've actually seen people getting pictures taken in front of other doors. They must not be Harry Potter fans. And wait and watch the window above for Creature to appear. Tip number seven, Ollivanders. Only do Ollivanders at Diagon Alley. This may actually be a bit of a pet peeve of mine, but there are a couple of reasons to do it this way. The first is that the Hogsmeade one is always more crowded. Don't ask me why. All I know is that it was the first Ollivander since Hogsmeade came first at Universal. The second reason is for more Harry Potter authenticity reasons. There isn't even supposed to be an Ollivanders in Hogsmeade. If the line looks super long when you walk by, go for a walk or check out a shop, then loop back. We did this and it went from a line around the block to no line at all. My best advice is to look everywhere in every corner, window, and don't forget to look up. Check out Ollivander's desk in the back of the shop. Make sure to ask an employee for assistance as they have a wealth of knowledge on the wands. Tip number eight, interactive spells. When you purchase an interactive wand, you'll receive a map with Diagon Alley on one side and Hogsmeade on the other side. Each map indicates where spells can be done using your interactive wand. There are also symbols on the ground telling you that you're in the right place. It took me quite a while to master it. You'd be surprised how difficult it can be when you feel quite silly with kids behind you waiting their turn. But by the end of my full week there, I felt like a pro. Basically, you have to ruin the magic a bit, and remember that there is a sensor picking up the movement from the tip of your wand. Look for the round black camera lens with the red dots and point your wand in that direction. You don't want to be too close either, maybe about two to four feet from the camera, and make sure the movement is small. And yes, there are hidden spells not on the map, and they do not have a symbol in front of them. I used to think that they rotated the hidden spells and that there were others that I wasn't aware of, but I actually did some more research and asked a cast member last time I was there, and there really are only two. So the two that are in Diagon Alley, um, I can share with you the location, but not what happens, since that would kind of ruin the fun, wouldn't it? The first I know of is the right-hand window at Scribulus, and the second is at the apothecary store front window. Make sure to just do a triangular movement in the direction of the camera, and you'll see the magic happen. 
I'll throw in an extra little tip here. When someone is performing a spell either at the Umbrella or the Mermaid in Diagon Alley, stay out of the way. Unknowing pedestrians may also get wet. Tip number nine, Nocturne Alley. If you haven't heard elsewhere, you can see hidden images on the Nocturne Alley part of the map under a special black light in Nocturne Alley. I thought from reading other blogs that it revealed hidden spells, but it just reveals fun images. I had a difficult time finding the light the first time, but it is located to the right of the moving skeleton between the skeleton and the locomotor chimney sweep spell areas on the map. Also, be aware there are three entrances to Nocturne Alley. The first is next to the entrance to the actual restaurant for the Leaky Cauldron. The second is under the Borgen and Burke sign. And the third is the Nocturne Alley sign at the end, where the finger pointing arrow is. There's also a good bit of hidden magic at Borgen and Burke's, like the vanishing cabinet in the store in the back right hand corner. If you listen, you can hear the bird chirping, like from the Half-Blood Prince. When first entering the shop, you can see the hand of glory in the case on your right. Wait patiently as the hand will open and close. Take a good look around as there are many movie props and dark objects throughout the shop. Now this is my secret. Remember I told you to look everywhere, right? Well, exit out of the back door of Borgen and Burks and head down the dark alley. Watch out though, you're locked in. Well, not really. This is also the middle entrance to Nocturne Alley. Tip number 10, check out all of the magic shops in Diagon Alley. This includes the Talking Mirror and Madame Malkin's. Just for fun. I'll just stay in here for a little bit. Let's see if she does it. Those shoes look awfully comfortable. They are actually, thank you. <laughs> and the fun awaits you in Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. You'll enjoy getting some quality Quidditch supplies and sweets too. The Magical Menagerie is a fun shop mainly because of the displays. It's really just a stuffed animal shop, but once again, if you pay attention to all the details, it is a shop not to be missed. Remember to look up. You might just spot a crumple horned snorkak. In the back of the shop is a door out to the alley next to the bathrooms. There is a window there with a python. It's not Nagini, just a snake. Who you can hear talking. Or maybe you can only hear him if you speak parcel tongue. Hmm, I wonder. Also, the front windows are fun too. There are spots for spell casting and the one on the right has a giant toad that moves. Tip number 11, Hogsmeade. After getting off the Hogwarts Express and taking in the awe of Hogsmeade Village and the looming Hogwarts Castle, step into the Three Broomsticks for a bite. While having a meal, make sure to check out all of the many details. Look up and all around. Also, make sure to go check out the Hogshead side of the restaurant. Make sure to leave via the back door and check out the excellent photo op.
Tip number 12, enjoy the interactive lines. Make sure to enjoy the line for the escape from Green Gringotts and Forbidden Journey at least once. I especially love the walk through the Forbidden Journey. You walk through the greenhouses and the castle and there are just so many details and the true Harry Potter fan does not want to miss these. But once you've experienced the line, I highly recommend using the single rider line. There are express passes at Universal Orlando, but they are pricey. The single rider line allows you to skip ahead of everyone if you're willing to be split up from your party. It's only for a few minutes and allows you to enjoy the rides more. But beware that at the busiest time of the day, usually the early afternoon, even the single rider line can get backed up. Tip number 13, don't forget the souvenirs. After having a talk with the Green Gods Goblin and the money exchange, make sure you pick up at least one banknote to take home. Yes, you can also spend them like money all over the Universal Parks. Make sure to send a letter home from the Owl Post found in both Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley with an Owl Post mark. And grab yourself a chocolate frog and some Hogwarts house themed items. I'm a Hufflepuff. What's your house? Let me know in the comment section below. Tip number 14, Moaning Myrtle in the bathroom in Hogsmeade Village. Yes, believe it or not, one thing that is not to be missed is the restrooms in Hogsmeade. So when you use the restroom in Hogsmeade Village, make sure to stop and listen and pay attention because you might just hear Moaning Myrtle. Tip number 15, ride the rides just before the park closes. I've heard others say to ride them as soon as the park opens, which is also a good thing to try, but I've gotten there early and seen the lines wrapped around all the way to the entrance to Diagon Alley or the bridge next to Hogsmeade. So stay till close to closing, and the wait is usually only about 20 minutes or less. We've ridden twice in a row this way. Tip number 16, Fire Breathing Dragon. Yes, there is a fire breathing dragon, but it is quite unpredictable. They say there is a sound that comes just before the dragon breathes fire, but sometimes it doesn't happen when it's supposed to. And there are other sounds that deceive you into thinking it's about to happen, like the train arriving. So be warned if you're waiting for the perfect shot, you may be holding your hand in the air all day waiting for it to happen. But that being said, if you are willing to put in the work, it is possible to get a shot of the dragon breathing fire. My husband is a photographer and his tips are to choose the right composition and be patient and you might just get lucky. Tip number 17, the light show on Hogwarts Castle. They now have a light show and fireworks at Hogwarts Castle. They have a Christmas show and the dark arts show. Stay tuned for some tips on how to make the most of enjoying the fireworks at the Hogwarts no, Castle. And last but not least, my tip number 18 is take a seat on the stairway to nowhere and just enjoy the view of Diagon Alley. The stairway is right behind Hagrid's motorbike between Green Gods and the Magical Menagerie. This is my favorite spot. Grab yourself some ice cream from Florian Fortescue's, a hot or cold butter beer depending on the time of year, or a draft beer, and just people watch or wait for the dragon to breathe fire is an excellent view of Diagon Alley. It's my favorite spot to sit at night just before closing as the crowds thin out to head home. Then you can have Diagon Alley all to yourself and without having to push through crowds leaving the park. It helps to preserve the magic a bit as you leave.
Do you know of any hidden magic I missed? Please share in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And remember, be savvy and enjoy the journey.